Hi, welcome to Jeremy's Tech Channel. And today we're gonna to check out some quirks with Linux and some challenges that I'm having right now during my 60 day challenge. We're headed to the home stretch here of my Linux challenge. I decided to do 60 days on Linux. I'm at day 51, so I'm really getting close to the end here. And for those of you who have been following along, don't worry, I still love it. But I do wanna share some of the challenges that I've been having, not just paint everything as, you know, pie in the sky kind of thing. There's There are some challenges that I'm dealing with. So I wanna share those with you, maybe see what how I've addressed them, and maybe that'll help you along in your Linux journey. The first issue that I ex experienced with software, specifically applications working like I need them to, was last night. I was needing to manipulate an SVG file, and so I was opening up Inkscape. I've done that, you know, half a dozen times and been able to work within, within Inkscape. I like using Inkscape. It's a very popular application across multiple operating systems, so I figured it was a good skill for me to learn. Well, I open it up, I get to the initial screen, I go to open up my SVG and crash. So I go and try to do go about it a different way, create new document and crash. Well, at the time I really needed to get <laughs> that thumbnail done so that I could get my video that I uploaded last night for you guys to experience and for me to keep that 60 day challenge. Not only am I going 60 days with Linux I'm also recording a video a day within that time frame. No big deal. It's actually been going quite smoothly, but last night I did have an issue with Inkscape. I had to open up, I think it's called Color Paint. It's spelled with a K, you know, because I'm using KDE. And I was able to manipulate that SVG enough to be able to get my thumbnail up and going. I woke up this morning, went through my regular checks for problem solving and within the first couple of steps i was able to get that resolved how did i resolve it i updated the system i use endeavor os which is an arch based distribution and you know what it updates all the time and i actually had multiple updates sitting ready for it last night i decided to run them with the new updates this morning and inkscape opened up beautifully and I was able to access that SVG file, work with it a little bit to see if it's working like it's supposed to, and it is. That was a small minor issue, but I did experience that. Another issue I am having is not necessarily Linux specific, but my video production workflow. Doing a video a day means <laughs> I got a lot of project files, I got a lot of raw files, and I got a lot of exported files. I'm running out of space, and uh, I also have an external M.2 NVMe uh, with a USB crossover for me to back things up. I want that to be set as a backup, not as a drive to work off of. The speed of my M.2 is a generation three. So it's, it's transfer rate is at 2.3, 2.4 gigabits per second, which is really fast and especially for file transfer, but not necessarily something that I'm comfortable working off of. I've got to figure something out. I've got a Dell G15 laptop and there is another spot for an M.2 NVMe drive. So I'm probably going to need to purchase that, install it on this laptop, and I'm interested to see how Linux sees it. Now I'm sure it's just gonna see an unformatted drive and I will pull up something like Gparted or whatever KDE's partition manager is and I will partition it and it will work great and I'll move on with my day. At least that's what I hope, but I don't know. And that's a challenge that I'm dealing with right now with my Linux machine. Another thing that's happening is a quirk that I'm experiencing. I have dual monitors set up. When the monitors go to sleep and I wake it back up, normally I see a mirrored login screen and I type in my password and then it's an extended display again where I have two separate displays and everything is where it needs to be. I have no problems with that. But once in a while, when I am trying to log in, only one screen <laughs> will see my input. And it doesn't matter which one. It's sometimes it's my uh, external screen and sometimes it's my screen that comes with the laptop. I don't know why. Most of the time you see it on both. I hit enter 
and then it moves through. But sometimes it only shows on one screen. I don't know why. I'm sure it'll be some simple update or some sort of configuration thing that maybe you know I could configure and correct that. Now, that is not killing my workflow. It is not killing my experience, but it is a quirk that you should know that I'm dealing with. Another thing that I'm dealing with that is a challenge that will keep me from using Linux specifically for full production. Let's say I decided to do my production at work with Linux. Right now I'm using an iMac Pro. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do it for this one simple reason. Everything in that building is audio over IP, specifically Dante. And although it, um, embedded devices that have Linux embedded in them are able to access Dante, for end users, Dante Virtual Sound Card, uh, the controller software, those things are not planned to be developed for Dante. I'm sure there might be a workaround, but when it comes to critical audio over IP and how things work and how it's routed, that is a no-go for me. I, I have to work within Dante, and, if, and that is a big protocol across the board in live and post-production. So it's very important to me that I can have that. Other than that, things are going great. Been able to edit videos smoothly and nicely. I have been able to connect random things like an Xbox controller and a Bluetooth headset and uh, a random USB microphone, which is farther away from my face. So I'm sure it sounds awesome today. <laughs> But I wanted to share where I'm at and hopefully, you know, to encourage you if you are going through Linux for the first time, that you're not the only one dealing with some issues. Now, I'm dealing with very little because of some configuration at the front end, and I really haven't had to deal with much. I did a, a review of Ubuntu Studio a couple days ago, and what I loved about it is the configuration tools. There's a front end for Jack Audio and for your plugin management, which is killer by the way. But I was able to configure all of that within Endeavor OS. It wasn't, it just took me a little bit of time to get that going and I was also new learning how to make that work. Any distribution that you choose, you should be able to get some of these things working that you might have challenges with. There could be specifically that little quirk that I was dealing with as far as where the display for my input for my password, that lock screen, there could be an update that happens and that's fixed and addressed and I won't see that anymore. That's what happened with my Inkscape um, issue. I updated, I was expecting, I had read online that there was um, some people that had dealt with a corrupted .config file and I was like, oh, I'm gonna have to open up the term, you know, and I was actually a little disappointed because I was like, oh, I get to, to flex some skills and open up Kate or open up Nano or, or open up Vim or, you know, get to use some of that and, and deal with that file. I didn't know if I was going to delete it and recreate it or if Inkscape was going to recreate it for me when it booted up the next time. I didn't know. It was kind of interesting that that might happen to me, but alas, a little simple update fixed my issue. <laughs> and if you're a new user like I am, that might have excited you that, hey, the updates aren't just for new features or for flashy things. They, they also address and fix issues that they're having with the application themselves. That is my update of where I'm at right now with Linux. I've got a little over a week to go. And on that 60 days, I will share what I've experienced as far as uh, editing video. I've essentially got three hours to record, edit, and get it uploaded. And that includes prep work and getting this, giving some sort of valuable content that will be valuable for you and for me. <laughs> getting kind of tired, but it's worth it. And am I all of a sudden going, well, because of those little quirks and those little issues, I think I'm gonna walk away from Linux. No, that's not the case. In fact, the more you work through with something, the more endearing it becomes to you. And that's what I'm experiencing right now. I'm still loving Linux, guys. It's still working great for me. I would like to see 
something with I really would like for there to be some better production support, specifically audio over IP. I know there's uh, AVB. I know there's some other audio over IP protocols, but pretty much all the boards that I deal with and all the studios that I deal with in my area, they use Dante if they're using audio over IP. So I, I kind of need that. That's my one big, huh, wah, wah. But it's kind of cool to learn that there are Linux devices that are like a Focusrite device. For example, it has Linux running all of those pieces. That embedded Linux working and controlling that hardware works without a hitch. And Dante gives me hope. So anyways, hope you enjoyed the video. I will see you guys next time.